So I will bring up Guy next, Guy who needs absolutely no introduction. I can't believe he opened saying he didn't know, but no, there were people who might not know him in the room, I'm sure. Everybody, if not knows him now, will we'll know him in the next 24 hours. So, um, Guy, why don't you uh, come up and, uh, and and talk a little bit about talking to him? Sure. So, uh, now it's going to be hard for you guys to believe that I'm not who I, I claim to be. Uh, I'm actually going to be doing some other guy's presentation. Uh, many of you know Chagai, who's our who's Takadu's uh, CTO. But in order for uh, all of us to believe that uh, it's a different person who's, who's talking to you, other than clicking this, I'm going to just uh, <laughs> yeah, do switch of personality. Well, I can't grow by six inches or whatever the difference between Chagai and myself uh, is, so I'm just going to do some uh, transformation here. Uh, can't do much about my hair. Um, okay, am I CTO material now? Um, good. So, um, I'm not going to talk with you about Takadu. Uh, if you are curious, if you do not know what Takadu does, lots of time uh, in breaks and uh, in the future to talk about it. I do want to talk about some uh, interesting facts that we came across uh, working with many water utilities worldwide over the past three years and, and some. So, I will use this one slider just to kind of remind ourselves what Takadu does. Uh, we take whatever sensor data the water utility has, could be flow, pressure, quality, any other signals that are coming in from the network. Uh, we use uh, our cloud infrastructure and very smart algorithms running uh, in the cloud to analyze those signals in real time or whenever they come in. And uh, we detect problems and inefficiencies in the network uh, very close to when uh, they're happening and then in turn reporting or alerting the utility on those inefficiencies, faults, problems uh, in different interfaces, web-based interfaces, email, text messaging, etc. to make each and every one of these stakeholders in the utility accountable and uh, informed about the things that they need to do. Um, uh, we are not taking the human being out of the equation. On the contrary, what we're trying to do is empower the individual in the control room or the analyst or the modeler and give them A, the best uh, information analyzed and, and diced down and help them focus on the most important things rather than uh, looking through mundane you know, data sheets and, and Excel spreadsheets and, and what have you. Um, the information I'm going to be presenting or the analysis I'm going to be presenting here is based on our work, uh, ongoing work with uh, about a dozen utilities from Australia to Chile, it's really covering a wide range of uh, countries, types of utilities, types of challenges, um, and obviously many, many signals, millions of data uh, samples or data days, uh, many, many thousands of events, I think we're into the hundreds of thousands of events, mind you, in, in our lingo, something that looks suspicious is not an event something that was analyzed and was decided through lots of algorithms and algorithmic uh, analysis that is in fact a problem and was given a name, was classified. It's not a problem, it's a leak, it's a burst, it's a faulty meter, it's a valve that was left open for no good reason. So once we call it by name, that's an event and we've seen, I guess, over a hundred uh, of a thousand events in those different utilities over the past three years. And uh, yeah, on the leakage side of things, we're proud to say, our customers are proud to say that using Taka, they've been able to detect uh, leaks and, and burst much earlier in very uh, large numbers, not only number-wise, but also um, uh, frequency-wise. They detect them quicker, more often, and the magnitudes are going lower and lower, so we're able to, to find even the small leaks very quickly. Um, but once you decide that this is the, the, the way you want to go, uh, you want to do smart monitoring of your network, um, it really changes the way you think about things. Um, because everything you thought of as being the truth is being challenged. So, for example, when you thought 
is the starting time of, of a leak might actually not be that. That leak might have actually started a few days or weeks or months before what you had in mind. And that might change the way you, uh, you think about your, your ongoing operations. Um, how quickly you think your crews were fixing problems, or how accurately uh, and diligently they were actually fixing the problems, might be different from uh, the reality. So you'd actually, you might actually not want to know, uh, because that might require you to change the way your operations and reporting are going. Um, and of course, the way you measure things. Once you introduce smart monitoring, it's very easy to, uh, to find evidence for things that could be measured differently, that have different meanings, that you're missing the values for. So for example, you want to know how much water you're losing. How about starting with how much does my water really cost? And then when you start asking those hard questions, you find different people in the organization with different views on, on how much you know, the asset operation costs and how much the, the water itself etc etc so with the help of the utilities that we've been working with that's just a partial list we've actually been able to uh to devise a list of, of such kpis and, and benefits we're going to be discussing this at length uh, in the conference tomorrow but just as, as a sign for all of us new opportunities emerge out of this practice so being able to react before something bad happens requires not only having this information at the tip of your, your fingers. Um, it actually means that you need to be able to react, so send the crews out quickly. Um, and of course, during the winter, it's harder to do that than it is during the summer. But regardless, it's very hard to, uh, as they say, teach a new, uh, an old dog new tricks. And of course, reprioritization. Because sometimes what, where you thought your problems are or your challenges are is not actually where they are, and that requires a shift of mainly budgets. We're going to talk about budgets uh, today. So here is some good news, depending who you're asking. And this is coming from uh, one utility in particular, but we've seen it uh, across the board, uh, or at least signs of it. Smart monitoring drives spending increases on field crews. That's counterintuitive. That's going to be weird. Because if you think of it, if you're monitoring, and you're finding problems earlier, then you can reduce your expenditure on field crews. That's actually maybe one of the goals of, of undergoing a smart water network deployment of, of any type. I want to reduce the cost of my field crews. So it's not about the cost. It's about the efficiency. And what you find, what some utilities that have been using Kakadu and, and other technologies, I guess, have found, is that the better you are at finding where your problems are, the more sense it makes to send crews out. And one particular utility um, in Chile, that's uh, Aguas de Antofagasta, uh, they were actually uh, presenting in this conference last year with their first uh, few months of experience with Takadu. A year later, they're now reporting that instead of 40%, 4 out of 10 times that they sent crews out, and crews came back empty-handed, what they call dry holes. So from 40%, they've gone down to now, 8 out of 10 cases, 8 out of 10 uh, detection crews going out uh, on, a, on an alert, managed to find it and fix it. So that's a huge increase in efficiency of detection and repair crews. What's your next step? Hire more repair crews, because now, there's justification. There's a good reason for them to go out. They're not just wasting their time and coming back empty-handed. So again, counterintuitive, counter to what we, we all call uh, logic. Um, you know, let's hire more people to do detection now that we've got better tools and better means of, of locating and pinpointing where the leaks are. So we're actually saving operational costs by hiring people. Okay, so everybody's talking about the economic level of leakage. And the economic level of leakage often comes up as a reason not to do things. Okay, I've reached my economic level of leakage, it doesn't make sense for me to, to, uh, to try new stuff. And this is actually evidence that if you use new technology, your economic level of leakage 
changes, drops. And uh, uh, the utilities in the room should be aware that once you've reached your economic level of leakage, it's not time to stop doing things because there's no economic point in doing it. There's actually a point in searching new technologies that can drive your economic level of leakage further down. I know it's hard to, uh, uh, to swallow from, from, from this morning, but we're going to be talking about this much more when we talk about the returns on investment and benefits. A new KPI, a new uh, key performance indicator, uh, is like grief. You need to digest it. You need to, uh, to go through all the uh, common phases of, of grief before you can actually make use of it. Um, so, you know, if you've learned that you've been actually missing le leaks or problems for a long time, it's going to be hard, especially for people who are entrusted with finding those leaks. If you find out that your sensor availability is not 90%, you're getting signals from 90% of the sensors, 90% of the time, or whatever the calculation is, guess what? Some of those signals are complete nonsense. And your, your telemetry might not be as good as you think. And once you have a monitoring system in place, suddenly this information comes back to haunt you. Then it's time to, uh, to decide what you do. So the first thing you do, as, as you know, is the case with grief, denial. Ah, you got it wrong. And you don't, you don't know how many times we've heard from a customer, you're wrong. And we're happy when we hear that. Because algorithmics are, is, is a bit, well, it's, it's science, right? There might be some uh, good reason to, to, to err once in a while, but it's generally correct. So later on, they come back and say, you know what, you're right, but ah, it's, it doesn't look good in my report. Or it means that that guy, should be fired because he, he wasn't doing his job right. But that guy is actually the guy writing the report, right? He's not in charge of the meter, and he's not in charge of the leakage. Um, so that, then when bargaining starts, especially when you, uh, when you write the business case, okay, let's say, well, it's not leakage, or it's a background leakage, and background leakage gets into another bucket. And, uh, and then comes the uh, stage of depression. Sometimes it's not experienced as, as gravely as, as uh, it's described here, but uh, oh my God. We've got so much work to do. I don't know how many of you remember uh, Mark Penny? Uh, is Mark in the room? No, not yet. He's going to come. Mark Penny, uh, last year's presentation, was like, oh my God, I've seen all these technologies out here, and all I'm thinking is of how backwards or how, how much more work we need to do in Yorkshire water uh, to get it right. So in a way, once you understand that technology can go the distance, it's time for you to, uh, to start using it. And then acceptance, um, now we need to find a way to do it. S sometimes, and it's hard for us as a vendor, it's hard for the water utilities, it does mean that you need new types of people. Luckily, sometimes, many times, those people are not as expensive or need the 30, 40 years experience in looking at data from, from a water network in order to, uh, to get it right. So you can actually use uh, cheaper or easier to, to come by resources. Uh, here's another fact. When you do better leakage reduction, uh, your repair is actually cheaper and easier. So it's not only about you know, finding the, the leak earlier so we save uh, the, uh, the magnitude that, 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 that you see on the screen. So it was one liter per second in April 7, became four liters per second, hence we are 4x better if we find it earlier. No, we're not 4x better. First, you know, we should not calculate the daily magnitude. We should calculate the entire amount of water that got lost. And obviously, the earlier you find it, the more water you save. It's exponential. Because once a leak grows, and these leaks have a tendency of suddenly growing. You know, they're background leaks. They're pretty steady. And then they start growing. Now. That's typically when utilities find them using their, their existing methods, right? Nightline analysis or uh, acoustic gear when, when it's hard to find a problem. When it's, it grows bigger, it's easier to find. But finding those bigger leaks and looking for those bigger leaks is actually a sign of inefficiency. You should look for them when they're young, when they're small. Of course, 
you know, we're all sitting, you know, we're, we're preaching to a choir here, so we all know that the uh, value of water, uh, and specifically of loss reduction, is not just because of water uh, that, that we save. Um, all of these uh, squares on the screen are examples. It's not an exhaustive list. These are the things that you can save and can uh, be more efficient on when you reduce leakage. So repairs are cheaper, damages and fines are lower, interruptions to service uh, are, are uh, sparser, water quality is better, uh, and I'm not going to bore you with fact, but we've got a lot of the facts behind these uh, uh, statements. Assets can be sustained for a longer period. On the PR side, no need to mention, and obviously um, you can increase the capacity. Some other types of observations, we call that swanonomics, uh, and taking after uh, uh, Steve Levitt's uh, freakonomics. They're not as freaky or freakish, but they're, they're not what you thought. So a meter sample, data coming from a meter, is that worth any money? Yes, it does. How much? Depends how you want to look at it. How much do you pay for this meter? What's the life expectancy of the meter? Um, you know, divide the cost by the life expectancy and you get the, uh, the actual value per day or per year or per sample. And that sample can be worth a few good pennies. And that day could be worth quite a few good dollars or pounds or euros. So uh, the raw data actually has value. That's even before you start thinking what you can do with, with the data. So once you implement smart metering or smart, sorry, smart uh, monitoring, hey, that data is much more uh, relevant to me now, and now it's worth more money. Um, yeah, I think the next one is, is pretty obvious, but not that obvious when we speak to the water utilities. Uh, leak detection is least helpful when you need it most. Because when you've got peak leakage, when it's winter, when it's freezing cold, when you've got a spike in cold and everything is, is bursting, um, you know, you're not going to be walking your, your uh, pipe. You're not going to do your active leakage detection the way uh, you go about it normally. You're going to be attending to the most urgent or the biggest stuff first. And uh, this is exactly when you need technology to assist you. Because the normal course of operation simply not cut it. Um, and uh, next one, yeah. Most of the leaks we repair, not us, I mean, water utilities repair, do not impact the bottom line. They do not move the needle, as we say. Uh, why is that? Because of the nature of how leaks are detected. Uh, a crew goes in, finds something. They might be compensated or, or rewarded for finding it. They might not, depending on how the utility works. But in any case, it's going to be identified and it's going to be fixed. How big is it? Does it really matter? Um, on the flip side, there's something big. But that's the only outstanding job or the only thing you need to do in this particular zone or sector of DMA. As a detection crew, depending on what, what my KPIs are, how I'm being measured, it might not make sense for me to go and fix that one because of all sorts of side issues not related to what we're trying to resolve here and that, that's reducing uh, the loss. Um, and uh, yeah, operational cost could be smart money. OPEX is scorned at, uh, or thought of as, you know, that thing that we've got to just down the drain, money down the drain. We've got to hire those leakage guys. We've got to do the ongoing uh, work of finding leaks. But our investment, improving our infrastructure, that's done through capital expenditure. And we want to call this bluff. In many cases, especially when you're, you're already, you've got your data, you're actually able to get much more out of your next buck that you spend operationally than the one than the dollar spent on the next piece of gear equipment. And I think we've got some of the utilities sitting here who've got great examples for this. Unfortunately, it's, it's hard to admit, especially if your budgeting uh, and, uh, and budget allocation is geared towards capital, if you're being uh, you're getting tax benefits for capital expenditure, as is the case in many countries. So many things have to change in order to actually uh, embrace this reality. How hard is it to uh, adopt smart water network technology? Um, 
he, well, we all know it's hard, otherwise we wouldn't have been here, right? No challenge, no conference, no good food and great hotel. So uh, we're all lucky that it's hard. But it's hard not because people do not believe that technology works. People need to find the right justification to do things, to, to act. And right now, as an industry, we're failing. We're not coming up with the right set of argumentation or our arguments to get people convinced, hooked on technology. So each and every one of us, a technology company, a water utility, uh, you know, an analyst, we've got a job on our hands. We've got to think of it as a holistic thing. You know, it's not this piece of here, this piece of, piece of technology. It's how does everything play together and what are the joint benefits that we can get from uh, out of it. And um, yeah, we, we need to, to understand that we don't know everything. Um, uh, that's human nature, right? We think that well, once we, we're good at something, we got it covered. No, we haven't got it covered. Um, and I think all of us, again, technology companies, water utilities, anyone involved, and consultants, of course, what we know today, going back to uh, Arthur C. Clarke's uh, words, you know, if we can think of what we're going to do in 10 years, we obviously got it wrong. We all need to open our ears and minds and to uh, talk to each other and listen and come up with, uh, with new ideas. And this is why we're here uh, today. So, uh, you know, staying behind, and I think uh, there was a nice comment made about the, the age not only of the infrastructure, but the practices in place, staying behind is not an option. And I think all of us uh, should aspire to, uh, to progress and move forward, uh, first mind-wise or mind-wise and then technology-wise. Thank you very much.